So let's talk a little bit about the testing script. Um, I'm going to kind of go through and talk to you roughly on a testing script that you can get right out of Steve's book. Uh, ICP we use, were some of the ones that we were using and previously have slight modification in that. I think Steve's is a great script to start with and then you can refine and I'll show you some of the principles of why he talks, why he built his a certain way and then once again like obviously this is the pattern so let's take that as the vanilla and then add it and change it and modify it for your specific needs. The script breakdown in this case really comes to six particular parts. The first part is going to be a welcome and then we're going to talk about some a call question here but really it's a warm up. Okay, We want to maybe establish some type of rapport and then what we're doing is going to acclimatize the user a little bit and then we'll do the task. So number four is really where the meat of the usability testing is going to come in and then afterwards we'll do some programming and wrapping up. So for example here is a script. It says hi, say Thomas, right? My name is Wayne and I'm, I'm going to be walking you through, you through this session. You probably already know, but let me explain wh why we've asked you to come here today. We're testing a website that we're working on to see what it's like for actual people to use. I want to make clear right away that we're testing the site and not you. Okay? <laughs> so remember we're talking about the point that it's a test participant, not a subject. And that says you can't do anything wrong here. In fact, this is probably the one place today where you won't have to worry about making mistakes. That's a little tongue in cheek, that, that uh, Steve Krug, that's still Steve Krug humor there, right? Uh, and it goes on a little bit further, and you can kind of see that. But the idea is here, when it's, we're setting the table, and hopefully we'll alleviate some of the fears of people, because I think everybody has sort of inherent, like, I want to succeed, I don't want to let people down type of thing. So the whole first time, we're not supposed to really like color or do anything, try to stay on script as much as possible. Stick to the script, stick to the script, stick to the script. Now this is the point where we come to the time where we'll set some time uh, for the interview and say, well, you know, Let's probe, and, you know, let's probe and let's ask something that actually came out of it. This is the dynamic part. This is the part where you'll be off script. So the probing part will be say, you know, there's anything that you think that should be clarified more that's useful for people who are observing the video or the broadcast later on, as well as maybe there's something that came up that didn't come up with the other participants. And it's like, man, I really wanted to know what they were thinking type of there. This is where you do. So this is kind of like, you'll see this on the layer curve when we're talking about design thinking, but there's one point at the inflection where we're kind of going off script here, and we're now looking at this is a unique situation. How much can we mine out of this specific unique information? And this is the part where the interviewer really has to think on their feet. Let's, let's talk about the wrap-up section, okay? So this is the very last question. Generally speaking, I think if you ask these two questions, it's, it's really, really say, you know, do we have any questions for me now that we're done? And say, thanks, that's exactly what I needed. It's been very helpful. I suggest saying that's exactly what we need. It's been very helpful, regardless if it was helpful or not. <laughs> okay, we say that tongue in cheek, but everything, you know, every book you learn, you read, you've learned something, that type of stuff, will always garner things. There will be some test subjects that are more difficult to extract information than other ones. I think you have an onus, a responsibility that they've really come and volunteered and help you out. I think, hopefully, you mean it, but the idea is like, say, okay, hey, that's exactly what we need, it's been very helpful.